So, uh, unfortunate news, a, a little bit of a little bit of bad news uh, to to start the program. Uh, uh, Senator Mike Gravel, who was, in my opinion, uh, I, I could not find anything that I disagreed with him <laughs> about. Um, I think he is a very rare person, um, especially in in government. Uh, anybody involved in government, he's a very rare person. Stood by his morals, stood by his grounds, has passed away at the age of 91. Went peacefully with family. That's what the um, that's what the 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 Gravel Institute said. And if you haven't checked out the Gravel Institute, they do a lot of lot of great work. Um, you know, and it's run by these younger kids that really took a shine to Mike Gravel. Think of think of how energized people would have been to vote had Mike Gravel been in the running if he was a top tier candidate because he should be that that should be who we were looking to as top tier candidates. So before we go on, you know, I do want to do a quick moment of silence um, for Senator Gravel uh, and just kind of reflect a little bit and then we'll get into the rest of the segment. So if we can just take a moment of silence, that'd be great. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Um, so some of you guys might not be familiar with Mike Gravel. There, there's probably a few people that are watching uh, that are unfamiliar with with who Mike Gravel is. And uh, that's a shame because <laughs> he's awesome. He's he's a total badass. Uh, Mike Gravel, uh, you know, one of the things he's he's known for is reading the Pentagon Papers um, and getting it into public record. Uh, the New York Times posted it. Daniel Ellsberg is the one that kind of revealed it. The Pentagon Papers revealed uh, that we were lied to about the Vietnam War, you know, amongst various other things, and that there had been a plan <laughs> for for invading Vietnam uh, for multiple presidencies going back to Eisenhower, and maybe even before that. Maybe it was Truman. Um, but he read it. He got into public record. So that's all in that's information that's out there. Right. And it's like, that's not again, it's like, why is the depending on papers taught to, to kids in school? Well, because they don't want you to know. They don't want you to be a whistleblower. They don't want you to take moral stands. That's not what the education system is about. The education system is about teaching you how to be a good model employee, teaching you how to be a nice, quiet citizen that isn't going to ruffle feathers, that isn't going to cause any problems. You, they don't want you to be a Mike Gravel. They don't want you to be a Daniel Ellsberg or a Julian Assange or a Chelsea Manning or an Edward Snowden. They don't want to be a rabble rouser. So they don't teach you anything that might veer you down the path of rabble rousery, right? Uh, and, and Senator Gravel, I mean, if you look at his career, if you look at his history, if you look at who he is, uh, for, for all intents and purposes, that, that man is uh, a rabble rouser. He roused a, lo a lot of rabbles. Is that a phrase? Is that a thing? <laughs> Let's. I'm gonna make that a thing. A rabble rouser. For all intents and purposes, he ran for president a couple different times. He ran for president in 2008. Uh, and that, that's sort of the, the, the big famous speech that he's, uh, that, that I think a lot of younger people know him for, uh, which is, you know, kind of people my age and I'm in my thirties, but compared to, I don't know, let's, uh, I, I'm, I'm younger compared to some other folks, right? Like most of the voting, uh, but most of the voters, like my age doesn't really vote that much. We have a lower voter turnout than like the 60 year old, some stuff, but, uh, him calling out Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden and Barack Obama uh, for how hawkish they really are, uh, is kind of what propelled him to the front fr front stage in, in terms of like progressive candidates. So I want I want to share that. It's 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 a pretty short one. So it's it it won't be like super long or nothing, but I want to share that with you guys because I because it's awesome. I watched it multiple times. Actually, it uh, introduced this to my my roommate last night. Um, 
And she was like, yeah, this is, yes, all of this. <laughs> like, we need more of all of this. And I was like, I know, man. Like, that's what, I wish there were more candidates like Gravel, uh in, in, our, in, our, in, our, in our government right now. But, but there isn't. So he, here's the clip. These people frighten me. They frighten me. When, when you have mainline candidates that turn around and say that there's nothing off the table with respect to Iran, that's code for using nukes, nuclear devices. I got to tell you, I'm president of the United States. There will be no preemptive wars with nuclear devices. To my mind, it's immoral, and it's been immoral for the last 50 years as part of American foreign policy. Let's use a little moderator discretion here. Senator oh. Gravel, that's a weighty charge. Who on this stage exactly tonight uh, uh, worries you uh, so much? Well, I would say the top tier ones. The top tier ones. They made statements. Oh, 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 you have a certain arrogance. You want to. You want to tell the Iraqis how to run their country. I got to tell you, we should just play get out. Just play get out. It's their country. They're asking us to leave, and we insist on staying there. And why not get out? What harm is it going to do? Oh, the, you hear the statement. Well, my God, the uh oh, just will have died in vain. The entire deaths of Vietnam died in vain. And they're dying in vain right this very second. You know what's worse than a soldier dying in vain? Is more soldiers dying in vain. That's what's worse. Boom. Boom. That's 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 Mike Rebell. Gee, I, I love how Joe Biden in the quotes, I'm, I'm, I'm a tub drinker. Look at me, I'm over here. He ran for president fucking four times and failed. And it and it took until like you had to be slightly better than the worst one of the worst presidents America's had in a in, in a while. Like oh man. Joe Biden is the same. Hillary Clinton was the same. Barack Obama was the same. Joe Biden's gonna be the same. He called him out. I mean, he's raising his hand. Oh, me, include me in the war hawks. I, I can I can be I can destroy Middle Eastern countries too I can do that too. He goes on right uh, there the, the this is only a short clip, um, but he goes on to talk about a few of the other uh, candidates because uh, let's use a little moderator discretion here. You're calling out a lot of war crimes and we don't particularly like that. Uh, where's that? At? There it is. So this is from Consortium News. Um, and Joe Loria wrote this because he because he was close with Mike Gravel. Uh and he said later Williams asked him, uh, other than Iraq, list the list the other important enemies to the United States. Listen to that fucking question, right? Like you're 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 on national television telling the American people that they that America has a bunch of enemies. And it's like, wait a minute, when has America actually fought a war on its own soil? The last time that happened was the Civil War. We invade other countries as a, quote, preemptive strike. Pre I mean, this is Minority Report. This is what dystopian futures talk about. That's how they talk about Middle Eastern countries. Oh, we have to. It's preemptive or else they might win. What are you talking about? So he has to frame it because he knows he knows Gravel isn't going to give him the State Department answer. He's not going to give him the answer that he's looking for, right? So so he has to frame the question in a particular way that that maybe Gravel can be pushed to sound like he's also a war hawk, so that Brian Williams doesn't get in any trouble. So here's what Gravel says: he says we don't have any important enemies. What we need to do is deal with the rest of the world as equals. We don't do that. We spend more as a nation on defense than all the rest of the world put together. Who are we afraid of? Who are, who are you afraid of, Brian? I'm not. Iraq has never been a threat to us. We invaded them. I mean, it's unbelievable. The military industrial complex not only controls your government, lock, stock, and barrel. And here, we... Uh, and here he looked over to the other candidates all in the government at the same time, but they control our culture. The military industrial complex not only controls our government lock, stock and barrel, but they control our culture. 
You want to know why people think Americans are dumb? Because of unfettered nationalism. We invaded Iraq. We supported Saddam Hussein in his war against Iran. And then all of a sudden we go, wait, 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 wait. This guy's not doing what we want him to do. We got to figure out a way to invade Iraq. Get hit, neutralize him. Install someone who is going to do what we want him to do. But that didn't happen. Now they're saying, we don't want you guys here. They've been saying this for over a decade. And has the United States listened? No. Here's another important part of what he said. What we need to do is deal with the rest of the world as equals. We don't do that because of unfettered nationalism. Because we think we're the greatest country in the world. Build back better. Make America great again. It's the same rhetoric. It's the same thing. Blue MAGA, regular MAGA. All unfettered nationalism. The history of this country proves that we are far from great. We are far from the best. And he pointed that out. Now, he ran in 2020 again and uh, was not allowed to be on the debate stage. Why? Because of stuff like this. There's a, another quote I want to read because I think it's pretty great. This is about his pitch for direct democracy. It says, our country needs a renewal. Renewal not just of particular policies or of particular people, but of democracy itself. Representative government is mired in a culture of lies and, uh, and corruption. The corrupting influence of money has created a class of professional politician raising huge sums to maintain their power. These politicians then legislate later in the interest of corporations and interest groups that put up the money. Are today's politicians more corrupt than those of the earlier days? I don't think so. Most men and women enter public office and begin with an attitude and a concern for the public good. It, it is the power they hold that corrupts them. Throwing, out the ra th throwing the rascals out, Democrats or Republicans, or for that matter, any party that makes us feel a little bit better may give us some therapy, but reshuffling the deck won't make any difference. Equipping Americans with deliberative lawmaking tools will unleash civic creativity beyond imagination. A partnership of citizen lawmakers, uh, makers with their elected legislatures, will in fact represent government more responsive to the needs of the people. He's talking about a people's legislature. That's something that he's advocated several times. That's a video I put up talking about this particular idea from Mike Gravel, uh, that was heavily censored on YouTube. Go figure. Oh, man, YouTube doesn't want you to know about a people's legislature. Holy shit. That's crazy. Uh, this idea where people work, you know, but the, the citizens and the citizen lawmakers work together to create laws that benefit society, and then we vote on these laws, uh, would make us a lot more involved in American politics. Just in the way things run. Everything is political. Everything is political. Think about it. You, you, you drive to work. That's political because of roadways. The way the city is planned. That's political. How much you get paid at work. Political. That's a political argument. Is it hourly? Is it salary? When, and when your salary, do, does the corporation get to take advantage of you? It's political. What about health insurance? Can your family go to the doctor without worrying about medical bills? That's political. What about food? Can you afford food? Are the prices at the grocery store going up? That's political. If you were involved in that decision, yeah, we'd be a lot more informed of a populace for sure. Easy, simple to read laws. That's what he wanted. So, so where do where does that leave leave us? Right now, it, we we don't have that many. I mean, Mike Gravel was kind of one of a kind. I wish we had more Mike Gravel. I wish the fucking squad was anywhere close 
to being a micro well. But he described it, second paragraph. Most men and women enter public service and begin with an attitude and a concern for the public good. That was the squad. AOC, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, they went in in order to help people. And that's what they wanted. And then look what happened over time. They got corrupted with power. I'm waiting for a committee, so I can't say force to vote on Medicare for all. Let's not go on record to say who is and isn't going to support making sure that every American person has health care without medical debt. That it is a right that is granted upon you. Every person in this country deserves that. Now there, now there's there, there's political lingo being thrown by AOC, Ilhan Omar, or Rashida Tlaib about why they can't do their job, why they can't stand behind their flagship issues. They don't go in corrupt. They all start out. I mean, I'm sure Obama did the same thing when he said hope and change. Boy, I bet he meant it in the beginning of that campaign, right? Especially after Bush. But that's what the, the Democrats look for, right? When Republicans win, they go, who can we get that we can either groom to be just a little, little bit left of fascism? Or who can we get that we can make seem that's a little bit left of fascism, but really is still just fascist? In 08, it was Obama. In 2020... It was Biden. In 2016, it was Hillary. They're just a little just a scoochy over to the left, just a teeny tiny bit over. They just took like a half step away from total fascism. And they were and like, like, here's here. Here's let's just say this pen is fascism. They're like, right. They, they, they're kind of touching it. They, they do that thing that siblings do where they're like, I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you, right? But they're still. That's how close they are. They don't enter that way, but they become that way. Because the system is that's that's set up is all about money, corruption, and power. It's about exploitation. That's how they get their jollies. That's how they get their their, their influence. It's a shame that we don't have um, more micro bells because uh, I think I think we could we could use a few more. So uh, where does that leave us? I think that leaves us to pick up where his legacy left off and carry it forward. I think we should be you know there. I hope that we have people working on a, a, a people's legislature. I have this book. I'm, I'm, I should really get on reading. I'm really terrible at reading books. I'm good at like reading essays and articles and stuff like that. But when it comes down to sitting down and reading a book, I don't know what it is. I think it's something from my kid when I was like, when it, when it, for my youth, when I was like forced into reading books. Um, but I'm really bad at reading books, but citizen power, that's his book. Uh, I have it. I'm, I'm going to read it. <laughs> I'm gonna do my best. I gotta figure out. I think I'm, I need to carve out a little bit of time every day just to sit and like read a little bit. Um, I might I might start doing that. Uh, I used to do that, and that's how I got through a good chunk of people's history of the United States by Howard Zinn. I still haven't finished it. Uh, it's an it's an intense book to digest, but I'm gonna do the same thing with uh, Senator Gravel's book. Uh, so. Rest in power, Senator Gravel. You will, you will be, you will be missed. Popping over to the comment section. Uh, Holly says uh, we will sorely miss him. Yes, we will. Uh, let's remember Ramsey Clark too. I'm not familiar with Ramsey Clark. Holly, you're you're always great at introducing me to shit that I don't know, and uh, I I love that a lot. Uh, Cynical girl is in the chats as well. Uh, how's it going? Good to see you guys. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Holly says they call them defensive actions against Syria, Iraq, and Iran. Yeah, the uh, yeah the the preemptive strike or defensive actions, right? <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, very defensive when they didn't do anything. Actually, one of the things I forgot to to mention, so I'll mention it now, is he was he was part of uh, getting the redacted twenty eight pages released, uh, which revealed that Saudi Arabia had uh, connections to to nine eleven. So, um, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Holly says legislators need to be afraid of the people. Yes, uh, I believe that they definitely do and i think i think you're starting to see them being afraid of us which is why i think the the facade is dropping that's why they're 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 not hiding behind you know um vague legislation that sounds like it's fascist but it might not be and people go well you know it's, uh, and they make their little centrist excuses um but in reality they're you know fucking fascist laws but now it's just like they're just fascist laws there's no hiding behind it i, I talked about the, the how and we'll get into it a little bit later today but you know they're they're really not hiding it <laughs> anymore so um thank you guys so much for tuning into this video if you enjoyed this video please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people-powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now. Uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the Merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gostola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. Uh, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.